Now that we have our interface set up for texture panning the cloth here, let's go ahead and work on this, see what we can do. I've got these images up to sample colors, but I think I'd also like to use this image as a stencil, actually lay that texture down on this cloth. I'm going to scroll down here and instead of the noise brush, let's add a new texture to our brush. And maybe we could call this, uh, why don't we call this cloth? How about cloth brush? And over here, let's change or find an image for that. Let's find that image. So here's the material. Here's the uh, textures of the material. And here's the brush texture. Here's our cloth brush. Let's go ahead and keep this as image or movie. And let's come down here and click on open. And now I need to find my images in reference images. And let's see which one it is. Let's go with this cloth one. There we go. So now we have this image loaded up as a texture in our brush. Now what we need to do is change this brush mapping from random to stencil. I'll also come down here and turn the jitter down and turn the spacing down a bit as well. And you can see when I hover over the 3D view, I get this uh, preview of the texture. You can see it here. Now I can move this around by using the right mouse button. So if I click the right mouse button and drag, I can move it around. And if I press the shift button and the right mouse button and click and drag, I can zoom it in and out. I can also rotate it with the control key and the right mouse button as well. So then with the normal mouse buttons, I can move my character around here like so. Let's try this. Let's see if we can get the texture on this front panel here. Uh, let's adjust our color here. We don't want this blue. Let me come over here to this image, hold the S key down, and let me sample a nice fairly light brownish color here if I can find one. Maybe I'll come up here and try this. Something like that. There we go. Uh, I can get rid of this. I don't want that. And maybe I'll even make this a little bit brighter. Yeah, let's try this. I'm going to hit the F key and increase the size of the brush. Uh, I want to come down here and turn on face masking because I only want to work on this front panel. So I'll turn on face masking, hit the A key to make sure everything's deselected. I'll hover over this and press the L key. And now if we click and drag on here, let's see what happens. We can barely see, let me zoom in here, that that texture is being laid down on that. Now I think I want it to be a little bit more than that, a little bit better. Let's try and bring our brush color down a bit. And maybe I'll increase the strength of hair. Let's try again. See how this works. It's a little bit better, yeah. We're getting a little bit more of that uh, texture on there, but still not enough. Let me undo. But I think I want that color to be a little bit lighter. Let me try this. Something like this. I'm actually going to increase the strength a little bit more. And let's try this. Now we're getting some of that color down. That's looking a little better. Yeah, I kind of like that. Let me turn off the stencil real quick. I'll change that back to view plane. And let's take a look at it. Yeah, I kind of like that. Now we also need to do that for the edges around here as well. Let's uh, go back to that face select. And let me see if I can get some of that down on the corners there, on the edges. So I'll go back to stencil and see what we can do here. Let me take that brush down just a hair and paint right in there. There we go. And let me grab this down here, like that, and over here on this edge. 
Okay, so we've got that front panel down. That's not too bad. Once again, yeah. All right, so let's now work on one of the uh, side panels here. I'll zoom in to about the same size as we were before because we want the texture to be pretty much the same scale all the way around. And I'll hit the A key to deselect that area, the L key to select this panel. And let's see what we can do here. I'm going to increase the brush size and I'll just lay this down here. Yeah, okay. Let's spin around to this side. Hit the A key, press the L key, and let's lay it down here. And lastly, let's get this side. Select it with the L key, increase the brush size a bit. Let's lay this down. All right, let me turn back to view plane, deselect everything, turn off face masking, zoom out a bit, and see what we got here. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, it kind of gives the sense that there's uh, a texture to it. I think also I need to work a little bit on um, emphasizing the light and shadow of the folds here, kind of like this. But that's a good base texture, I think, to work with. All right, so I think to paint the light and shadow, we don't really need this stencil here anymore. I'll hit the X key to remove that. I'd like to come down here and it looks like spacing and jitter is good. Uh, those are pretty low. That's good. Um, for painting the folds, I think I'm going to need to turn on the pressure sensitivity for the radius of the brush so that I can draw a thin line on top and have it get thicker as it goes to the bottom to kind of replicate a, a fold in the cloth. So I'll turn the pressure sensitivity on here. And let's sample another color here. I'll press S and sample a little bit darker color here. And I think I'm going to be drawing this down on this part right here. All right, let's try this. Yeah, something like that. Now, I, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just barely getting it, and that's what I want. I don't want anything real strong here. So this is very light and very subtle, I hope. That's what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to have it be small up top, and then as I come down, I'm pushing more to get the brush a little bit wider. Now, one thing I notice, look down here, that's bad. <laughs> I'm pushing the brush um, stroke on down into the legs. Let me undo this. Glad I caught that early. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on face masking again and just select this panel so I don't accidentally paint on other parts of the models. All right, so I'll try it again. Well, hopefully you can begin to see that shadow there happening in the folds. It's very subtle. Um, I'm just trying not to do too much. It's easy to do too much on something like this. So now that I've got those in there, I want to go back to a lighter color, maybe something like this, and start doing the same thing on the top of the folds here to get that highlight. So let's try that. Yeah, so you can see, I think hopefully that will help the shadows pop out a little bit as well. All right, so there we go. We've got a nice cloth texture that we've put down with the stencil brush. And we've also done a little bit of hand painting to kind of make those uh, folds pop. Now, in addition to the normal map and the ambient occlusion map that we'll add in the game engine, I think this will really help 
gives some realism and some interest to the cloth here. So I'll begin working on the rest of the tunic here, just going through and doing the same kind of thing. Now I feel I would be remiss if I didn't mention yet again that we need to save this image. If I exited out of Blender now, even if I saved my scene, if I came in here and pressed Control or Command S and saved the scene, and then I exited, all this would go away. So I just want to emphasize once again to be sure and save your images. So for me, I'll come back over to the Slots tab and click on Save All Images. And that makes the asterisks go away. It only takes a couple times of losing your paint information for you to begin to remember to do that.